Okay, next we will come to the conduplicate concept. Okay, so remember that uh, scientists, remember that plant, Ostrobaley. Remember that one, Ostrobaley, Physi, that family. So I think you've already connected the dots. It's this scientist Bailey, okay? He discovered that that fossil, no? Maybe in Australia, okay? And he named it from the place and he named it after himself, okay? Okay. So Bailey, he believes in this conduplicate concept and according to him, there should only be two, two steps, that is folding of the carpal and position of the ovule, ovule, okay? So you give this heading, just say, Bailey... This is according to Bailey and it has the follow following two steps, folding and position. Then you write about folding and the position of the carpal. Let's see, folding of the carpal. According to this concept, closing of the carpal comes from the upturning the sides of the lamina on the midrib with the margins lying side to side. Okay, so they will... Upturn, okay. They were closed by upturning the sides of the lamina, and the margin should come side by side. So let's look at the figure two a. Okay, there. So here, this one, no. This is the conduplicate concept, okay. So you are seeing the upturn, and they are lying side by side, okay. Fine. Then let's continue from this diagram. Then this is step number two. So uh, further folding. So uh, they are spreading. Okay. Then it becomes like this. Then like that. Then it becomes just one. Like this. Okay. So let's continue. So I will not show the diagram again. Since we saw. So it is not extensive. Uh, in curving or in rolling with contact face to face by edge okay so that till there done okay so we saw only this the edge part they were in contact remember well, we saw only the edge part it's not like the whole thing fused not the whole thing only the edge the tip part then let's look at the position of the ovule so here, in this concept, ovules are born on the ventral surface of the carpal. Okay. So the surface which stand parallel to one another in uh, degeneria, as it is. Just take only one that you always remember. So are assumed to be the ventral surface of the carpal. Okay. So till, till there, till there, you stop. Just say that it is at the ventral surface finish okay don't confuse yourself so a conduplicate is done then let's look at the peltate concept i'll do here both in this video peltate and this one also because it's short no so the peltate concept is by professor troll and he says that couples have evolved from structures similar to peltate leaves and they have a picture shape okay they recognize three couples Peltate carpals with manifest peltation, then latent peltation and without peltation, okay, or epi peltate, okay. So he says that they are similar to the peltate leaves, okay, and it looks like a picture, okay, fine. Manifest, latent and e peltate. So it's easy enough, very easy. So those with manifest peltation have long long stalks and aciduform lamina where margins bear stigmatic papillae right to the base okay so what he says that long stalk okay and the stigmatic papillae means the sticky part from the margin till the base okay the entire length so those with latent position are comparable to leaves which show peltation in the embryonic condition okay then epicaltate they don't have any peltation at any stage of their development so till there you can stop. Then um, looking at the sui generis concept, it was given by Greg or Greg or okay. So he does not like the <laughs> classical concept at all. Okay, so there will always be somebody who will not accept. Okay, so he says that. 
he emphasized on the following points okay so directly you go to the points while the carpal and other floral organs are implanted on superficial meristem the floral organs are born on deep seated meristem at the vegetative apex okay so he says the carpal and the other floral is on the top superficial and the other the foliar organs like the calyx and corolla no they are from the deep meristem then he says also carpal develop without plastocrons between them okay then he says carpal primordium never has a bilateral base okay and he says the ovary and its cavity arise by a special mode of growth and not by folding in the margin so he is completely against he says the ovary did not come by fold he he says the ovary it is special it grew by its own decision it did not fold okay then he says so let me just summarize for you he says the carpal okay is from superficial meristem okay meristem uh, do you understand what it means by meristematic tissue meristematic tissues are those tissues okay um which have the capacity to uh, divide into a new plant okay like your shoot apical meristem okay uh, a flower bud cannot arise from anything other than the shoot apex okay because the shoot apex has these cells which are meristematic okay only they can give rise to the shoot okay then even your leaf leaf it cannot come out or branch it cannot come out any way anyhow okay only those places which have the meristematic tissues let's say this this part of the the plant has meristematic cells then the mm. branch the branch can come out or the leaf can come out or the bud can come out okay so you, you understand no meristematic cells okay so he says the carpal is on the superficial meristem and the rest are in the deep meristem then again let me summarize cuz i know it's confusing then he says carpal don't have any plastocron between them okay just remember no need to answer what it is then he says carpal never has carpal primordium never has bilateral base okay primordium means uh, the primitive part okay he says it doesn't have any base and then he says the ovary it comes by it grows specially it doesn't come by folding okay so i i think you've understood so you can always write in your own words if it was offline exam can but if online exam then i you will just copy i know it no problem it's you know we have to adapt no to the surf the way of life then looking at the a carpic concept then by professor mcleon thompson it was he visualized the flower as a sporogenous axis okay he says the lower part of the axis is sterile and produce bracts bracteoles and sepals and the base of the sporogenous tip is microsporangial and gives off emergences which ultimately becomes stamens okay then the lower part of the microsporangial emerges and by sterilization into petals and staminodes okay of these messages keep coming it's so disturbing uh where was i when those messages come no i get distracted i lost my way okay let me let me explain again he says it comes from a sporogenous axis okay he says the 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 lower part of the axis okay this word no axis keep remembering everywhere so the lower part of the axis gives you the bracts and bracteoles and sepals okay then a little bit more to the base you get you get microsporangial and give off stamens okay then again the lowest part will give you the staminodes okay it means the stamen part Okay, okay when the toral growth is dominant over the apical growth then perigynous or epigynous condition results okay so just remember this so till there i think we can stop so with this it's complete okay